The music of Chrono Trigger was composed by Yasunori Mitsuda. Often revered as one of the greatest soundtracks for a video game, the music to Chrono Trigger is often a landmark for RPG music. Yasunori's style varies an incredible amount, with genres ranging from the classical peaceful days, to the industrial robos theme, to even the jazzy battle themes. The story behind the soundtrack is both intriguing and inspiring as well. Yasunori was originally the sound designer working for Square at the time. After writing some songs in his spare time, he knew that a music composer was where his heart was going to be. After challenging Square that he would leave the company if he did not compose for Chrono Trigger, Square finally relented. Yasunori spent the next few months toiling over the soundtrack, spending entire days and nights composing, suffering stomach ulcers and even witnessing his own hard drive put down on him, losing nearly 40 songs in the process. Yasunori literally composed for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Still with his determination and passion for writing music, the newly founded composer finished the score in time for release. It was reported that after seeing the end credit scene for the first time with the rest of the team, Yasunori broke down in tears. The song Secret of the Forest is many fans' personal favorites from the soundtrack. One of the main features of the song that resonates with many people is the fantastic bass lines. Speaking as a bassist myself, the bass here often varies up its pattern to keep the listener on its toes. We'll dive more deeply into the bass in just a moment though. Secret of the Forest strikes a great balance between simplicity and complexity, with just the right number of instruments to not sound too bare. Mitsuda utilizes eight instruments, which primarily feature the woodwinds, the flute in this case, and the strings. The flute functions as the lead melody that most people remember about the song. What's interesting about the flute is firstly the gliding nature of the notes it plays. In certain spots, such as right here, You can see that the lower note glides into the higher note here. This really provides an extra human touch that a lead melody should always contain. However, it's important that the glide isn't always used, as it can become a distraction in the music, rather than an enhancement. The next aspect that is notable is the lack of breath sounds in each note. Now what I mean by this is that in a normal flute sound, you can hear the natural wind passing from the player's mouth to the instrument. Yasunori, however, decided to go with a brighter and striking sound. Next, the harp in the original song sounded a lot more bell-like, so I decided to add an additional harp to merge with it. Some distortion was added as well to make it sound a bit more rougher. The bass is a standard fingered bass, with some extra effects added to it. Again, I added a distortion plugin, as you can see here, and I applied a um, high pass filter. In the string section, we have a, both a high solo violin and a low ensemble patch. The ensemble strings are mostly used throughout this first section while the higher violin comes in in section 2. The ensemble has a fairly quick attack that is necessary for us to enter into the first section here. The higher violin in section 2 is introduced at a shrieking pitch, which really adds the tension to this section. Now I'm sure most of you are wondering what this particular sound is, and how I managed to recreate it. After combing through a few of my own libraries myself, I was unhappy with most of the sounds, so I decided to reproduce the sound using a simple bass from Massive. 
I set the LFO here and routed it to the pitch of the first oscillator. If I hold the note down, you can see the pattern that the note follows. The simple next step was to just let go of the note at the right time to achieve that famous sound. Like many of Yasunori's tracks, the percussion is extremely minimal, using only a few congas and tambourine. The notable thing about the tambourine is the delay on it, which is the only instrument from the percussion that is affected by it. Moving on to the piano, it only appears in section 1b and section 3. In section 1b, its function here is to act as a variation to the melody that the flute played before. As you can hear, there is a delay here as well. In section 3, the piano returns and plays more of these chords as a bridge section to the song. Lastly, the choir only appears in section 1b. Its function here is to fill in the gaps once the, once the piano finishes its line. With these instruments in mind, let's take a look at how the song is constructed. Only two instruments begin the song, the bass and the harp. With instrumentation this sparse, the composer makes up for it by adding in reverb for both instruments. Now, reverb for the bass is rather unusual, as it would typically muddy up the low end. However, since the bass here is more focused on the mid-range, it works. The harp uses a 16th note arpeggio that only ascends upwards, and alternates between this A sharp sus4 and this G sharp major 7. each taking up two measures apiece. In my experience, major 7th chord sounds melancholic, which perfectly fits the tone of the piece. The bass is expertly crafted in this section. Yasunori understands that the bass doesn't have to be constant throughout, but should vary. What makes the bass rhythm pleasing to the ear is the fact that some notes play on the upbeat of the measure, in which the listener does not expect. The note right here, just before the repeat, is a perfect example of this. This one. It plays even before the repeat. Um, this note right here, before the repeat of the harp. Of course, this adds extra interest in the song, as he varies the bass line in the second repeat. Lastly in the section, this bass slide perfectly transitions us into the next section, which is definitely a nice touch. For this section, let's break it down instrument by instrument. The harp and the bass continue the same pattern as before. The newly added flute serves as the lead melody. Now this flute does a great job of following the rhythm of the other instruments. If you notice, the notes of the flute always seem to play along with the other instruments at the same time, whether the bass, sound effect, or tambourine. So the bass at the beginning, the sound effect in the middle, and then the tambourine at the end. These constant slides here, Right here and here. The 
They provide a smooth flow from one measure to the next. As I said before, the song doesn't overly abuse this slide, but it makes sure that it's used in key moments. Yasunori also keeps the rhythm of the flute the same throughout this key change. You can see that the rhythm here is the same as the beginning of the section. In the second half, the flute goes through a variance where it reaches for this top note rather than goes below here. Many composers like to move down with their melodies and then rise with the variance. The strings, of course, act as the pad to the song. The first chord here is a C sharp 6, and the voicing of this is mainly focused on these higher chords with a nice bass note at the low end. The next chord is a beautiful G sharp major 7th over D sharp right here. I think the reason why this chord works so well is that the D sharp at the bottom. The chord of the song is normally a G sharp major 7th, but with this D sharp, it gives the song a mysterious tension. This combined with the flute's G note, which is the 7th note of the scale, is a wonderful construction of a chord. The sound effect here, which plays throughout the entire first section, can be seen as an extra percussion instrument. If you take it out of the song, there's an empty space that an instrument would have to fill. With this odd sounding instrument, the composer adds both intrigue and rhythm. It is without it. Finally, the percussion is notably light and plays in the background with the other instruments. Largely the same as the first part, but swaps the piano for the flute. The section 1B also adds in a choir as well. The piano here adds a different spice to the rhythm pattern that the flute gave, and is a perfect instrument choice to support the melancholic feel. I find it interesting how the piano melody sort of ghosts the previous flute melody, and that it plays short notes instead of longer notes. I feel this contrib contributed to the song by giving it a little bit of a breather. After the piano finishes its motif, the choir enters and again outlines the previous melody of before. The last thing of note in this The last thing of note is this pleasant glissando run in the harp. It might seem difficult to comprehend how Yasunori composed this, but it's actually pretty simple. He simply took the notes of the G-sharp major 7th chord and spread it out in this ascending and descending part. The section brings more attention to the song, which is evident in the piercing strings. The harp here changes as well to reflect the new mood of the piece. Instead of always arpeggiating upwards, it also descends. And the bass, while playing different notes, usually uses the same rhythm as before. Also take note of this nice slide in the middle here. The main focal point, the strings are separated into both low and high. 
the high violin. If you notice, plays the same melody as the flute in section 1, but this time in a changed key. Unlike the flute, in the second go around, do I hear it? It drops down instead of goes back up. This is to support this new key change right here. The low string ensemble only feature two voices, but they are prominently loud in this section. I think the reason the composer did this was to not let the strings take up the entire mix at this point. Having only three total string voices gives more room for the bass and harp as well. The only negative I can point out in this section is that the harp and the high strings take up the same space, which can lead to some blending and lack of clearness. Section 3 seems the most removed from the other sections. It strips the song down into only the bass and piano. Let's take a look at each. Notably more complex, the bass fundamentally maintains this three note pattern here. And you can hear it right here. And here. So these three notes, these, and these. The second half of this motif, or measure, always changes it up to vary up the song. The piano deviates as well. It begins by using the 7th intervals to start out with, before transitioning to the nicer sounding 5th intervals. In the next few measures though, it keeps the home notes right here, while only moving the higher notes. However, if you can see that if I change these notes so that they're 5th intervals, it makes little difference. Both the bass and the piano are repeated note for note in this repeat right here. In the final transition before the loop, the piano moves away from the short notes of before and finally transitions to this longer chords. This combined with the sus4 resolving to the major chord right here, finally gives a sense of closure to the song. The involvement of the bass also sets us up for the reintroduction in the loop back to the intro. Now let's play the song in full. In the introduction, concentrate on this bass line. And you remember when we talked about the flute melody and how it coincided with the nice chord progression in section 1b? See how the piano sort of mirrors the flute melody of before? And then section 2? Is a more tenser section of the song. And finally in section 3, how there's reverb for the piano and the bass as well.
playing through Chrono Trigger, the music really captures your attention as you play through the different emotions of the storyline. Throughout the intense battles, the diverse environments, and the sad times when the party members depart from your party, the music always says something to you. Chrono Trigger is a perfect example of what great music should accomplish. Secret of the Forest, while a rather minimalistic piece, strikes a chord with many players due to its seamless chord progression and classic-based guitar writing that Yasunori has now become famous for. The soundtrack in this song in particular has really become a hallmark for what great RPG music should sound like. If you made it thus far, then I seriously appreciate that you took the time out of your day to watch my analysis. I greatly enjoy putting together these videos and I hope I can show the tips and tricks that the great composers of the past have put into their songs. Thank you and I hope you have a brilliant day.